Welcome. This is what the tower of a 7 Sea submarine looked like. The original U-96 was 67 meters long, or 220 feet. Follow me, please. The boat was originally designed for 24 people, but in wartime, the crew was doubled to 48. Enjoy our tour, room by room. Select the room where you want to go next. Here we are entering the bow torpedo room and the crew quarters. There were four torpedoes, stacked in vertical banks of two. They take up four meters, or 13 feet of room. Behind this tube is one of the two cylinders of compressed air, needed to fire the torpedo. Also stored in here were four extra torpedoes so that some bunks had to be folded up. With each torpedo fired, more room became available for the crew, and additional bunks could be set up. This is the captain's quarters. He was the only person on board with his own bunk. All the privacy he had was provided by this small curtain. This tiny space only allowed for a small table, a lamp, and a shelf over the bunk. Because the captain had to be close to the radio and the listening room, his quarters were located right next to both of them. Survival on a submarine was completely dependent on sound. The radio operator was always listening, whether it was for incoming wires while they were on the surface, or for approaching enemy ships while they were submerged. He was the eyes of the captain. Next to the radio room and the captain's quarters is the officer's bunk room. It also doubled as the officer's mess for the captain, the chief engineer, and the senior officers. One of the two toilets. It was shared by 48 men, because the other one was usually filled with provisions. Now we are in the control room. It's located in the center of the boat. The middle of this room is dominated by a large shaft for the periscope. The engineer had to maintain a precise depth whenever the periscope was used. Just behind me is the navigator's table, where the course was calculated and the position of the submarine was locked as often as possible. Here are the controls for guiding the boat, both on the surface and submerged, as well as the valves controlling the flooding and venting of tanks. Vorne, oben zwei. Hinten, unten zwei. When the captain called out the order to dive, the crew would immediately turn these wheels, which opened up the valves flooding the ballast tanks. Several crew members were involved in this tightly coordinated operation. Then, when the submarine needed to surface, different wheels were turned to release compressed air into the ballast tanks, forcing the water back out. The control room was the brain of the boat.
These are the petty officers' quarters. 16 people had to share these eight tiny bunks. <laughs> to make it even more comfortable for these guys, directly below them, large amounts of ammunition were stored. This is the Kombuse. Now we're in the galley. It has a small cooking area where all the meals were prepared. Breakfast, lunch and dinner for 48 people. There was not enough space in here to store all the provisions for the journey. So the food had to be crammed everywhere on the boat, including one of the two toilets. A journey could last up to three months. So you can imagine it didn't take long for the meat, the vegetables and the bread to spoil. The crew called the provisions stored close to the engines diesel food because of their constant exposure to the diesel fumes. Here I'm standing between the two large six-cylinder diesel engines, each deploying 1,500 horsepower. The diesel engines could only run while surfaced because they required the intake of air and the disposal of exhaust. The diesels allowed for much faster travel than the electric motors, which had to be used when the boat was submerged. The electric motors ran completely silent which enabled the submarine to remain undetected while hunting convoys or evading depth charges. The batteries were stored below the electric motor room. A full charge allowed for eight hours of operation below the surface. Then the submarine had to come up for air to recharge the batteries using the diesel engines. <laughs> 